this time on Normal Guy Games we revisit Chalnath. So in this video I'm going to show you how to take this and turn it into this. Easy enough, theoretically, allegedly. So this terrain is of course the Chalnath terrain and uh, the other terrain that I just showed you is actually from my original Kill Team box. Now what you're seeing here is I'm using a homemade wash. I got the recipe from Black Magic Craft and I'm pretty sure he got it from elsewhere but um, I'll put a link up to that. Um, so this wash is uh, honestly it, it's pulling away from the primer a little bit and it didn't do this on the last train. I think that Krylon may have changed the formula quite honestly. So I think this is the last time I'm going to use Krylon primer plus paint. Um, it usually saves a step and saves a little bit of money but honestly just the way that this is pulling away and having a hard time adhering it I don't I just don't think I'm going to use it anymore. So once you mix up this wash and prime the terrain. Uh, you give this thing, give the terrain a an all-over wash. Now th this wash is going to uh, pool. It's going to create some staining. Uh, but the, actually, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for kind of a grim dark type of a feel to it. Uh, you know, I want this terrain to potentially have seen some shit and not recommend it. So I'm not looking for anything pretty and nice and uniform. I'm looking for splotches and marks and just, you know, I just want it to look used and worn in. So once that wash is all over every piece, um, and then this takes a while, honestly, this is one of the, the bigger steps. It, it does take some time to cover everything, but uh, once that is all in place, that's kind of the biggest step taken care of. Um, the wash itself is, is a fairly easy recipe, and I've mixed a couple of different batches of it, but once you have it all done and it's dry, this is what you're going to look like. And as you can see on the banding, the iron banding there, the or the metal banding, the... Um, and the windows, the wash is pulling, and that's actually just fine. I kind of want the terrain to look grimy and grim and splotchy, and I don't want it to look uniform at all, which is fairly easy. Um, so I, I did also use the wash on the uh, terrain, or the I'm sorry, the tiles on the top, um, as well as on the inside. The top, actually, uh, we'll get to that later, but I, there's a reason why I did, the, did it the way I did. Um, as you can see here, this is, you know, this step uh, for all of the terrain, it, it does take time. So take your time, roll with it, and there we go. Now, once all of it's dry, I'm using my trusty Procrony Arts um, dry brush and I'm giving this a, an all over dry brush of Reaper's Belithian Chitin. Um, on the original terrain I also gave it another lighter dry brush but I think I'm just going to stop on the Belithian Chitin on this one. And again I'm just dry brushing everywhere. I'm not trying to make it uniform. Uh, the plaster type areas I'm trying to make a lot lighter than the rest so I will kind of dig the brush in a bit and uh, make sure that I get those areas a lot better along with the outer edges of the pillars as well the the raised edges and uh, that's what I do for all of these
So at this point, I pulled out some Karaberg Crimson, and before I dry brush this piece, um, in particular, I am going to use Karaberg Crimson on the door. Uh, that's what I used on the doors on the other terrain that I got in the Kill Team box. So I'm just, just going to try and make at least that part um, consistent. And uh, I, I felt like for this one, instead of painting a, a nice, neat door, if you give it a wash, let it dry, and then once you do the dry brush, it will actually kind of uh, lighten everything up and make the details pop a little bit. So I, I kind of like the way that that turns out. So I did all of the doors in this Karoberg Crimson. So for the next step here, as you can see, um, I have put some swirls using the wash on the tops of the terrain uh, on the, these tiles, and there's a reason for that. Uh, on my other ones, I used Space Wolves Gray, but on these, I'm going to go a little darker and use Ultramarine Blue. Um, what I'm doing is, is I'm going uh, straight out of the pot here, but I actually later on decide to water it down quite a bit and at one point I decide to go ahead and use the contrast medium on it as well because in the, on the last stuff I used the contrast medium on it to thin it down a little bit so luckily contrast paint does have quite a long working time so what I was doing here is transferring some of that paint from one to the other to kind of uh, make everything look a little more uh, swirly and a little, little less um, I don't know, you, I, I keep using the word uniform, but I guess that's really the word is I'm trying to make it look a little bit uh, uh, swirly, like almost like a marbly kind of a stone type, t type texture. Uh, but on these, I kind of felt like the, um, uh, the Space Wolves gray was a little too light. And I may go back and do the other buildings that I have like that, but there's also a good chance that I might actually just leave it like it is and have just have two tones on two different buildings, which is not an unheard of thing. So as a side-by-side -side here, you can see where I used the Space Wolves Gray on the other and the Ultramarine Blue on this stuff. And I kind of like the look of both, so I think I'm going to keep both. I uh, decided to try something new and try the, the Ultramarines. Thinning it down with contrast paint or the contrast medium was a uh, good way to make it stretch. I could for every two drops of paint and two drops of contrast one-to-one -one, I could paint two tiles. Now here this is the tedious part of the whole operation. Uh, here actually I am painting all of the trim and all the little special boxes and things like that all of it in uh, lead belcher and then I'm going to go back and do the boxes and the gadgets and greebles with a little bit of known oil but the banding I'm actually going to leave alone because number one known oil is expensive and I don't like using my dip wash or my my you know, homemade wash on details like this uh, but number two I kind of want the banding to stand out a little bit and make it look a little bit different and once again just kind of make everything a little bit you know uh, asymmetrical in the long run so at this point uh, po just you know do all of the little strange details in the uh, dials and the you know the different gauges all of the little vents and things like that uh, don't touch the windows actually the windows are a separate step and I'll show you that in a little bit
So in a feat of mystical YouTube magic, you don't have to watch me paint all of that metal. Uh, what I'm doing now is I'm using Blood Angels Red, Talisar Blue, and a little bit of Eondine Yellow to pick out some of the different pipes and details and things like that. Uh, I just wanted to, you know, just kind of mix things up a little bit. And yes, I do see the fact that I didn't paint the hatch metal, and I did eventually fix that as I went along, as, as well as the, uh, the little floor pieces that are missing blue as well. So once I'm done picking out a couple of the pipes and things like that with the different colors, I move on to the next stage, and I'll leave you with this until we get there. So at this stage, I pull out copper, and I unfortunately uh, watered it down a little too much. Uh, I didn't mean to water it down as, as much as I did. I keep forgetting that the uh, uh, army painter paints don't need to be watered down so much. Uh, so what I did here is I just picked out a couple of little details, just like with the colors, and made uh, a few p bits and pieces copper. Um, unfortunately, since it was so watered down, I had to go back and change a few, a few things later. Um, so here at this stage, I took Sycorax Bronze, and what I'm doing is not a dry brush. It's not a full, like, full-on paint uh, application. It's kind of like an overbrush almost. I'm only getting bronze on basically the raised areas, and I'm leaving the recessed areas kind of that washy sort of khaki color from the Krylon summer wheat paint. Um, I'm just doing that just to show a little bit of fading and weather wear. I, like I said, I don't want it to be all nice looking and shiny and pretty. I do want a little bit of shine, but I also want it to look like there has been, you know, some sort of battle or whatnot fought here. There's, there's obviously a reason why this building is completely and totally demolished, right? So, stands to reason. So at this stage, I once again pull out the Karaberg Crimson, and what I'm doing is running the Karaberg Crimson wash along all of the windows to kind of make the windows stand out as a crimson color, a sort of a light red. I'm letting the wash pool where it will, and I'm letting everything kind of run into the recesses just to once again kind of make everything look like it has been washed out and the colors are not exactly in the greatest shape. Everything's kind of faded. I did this with the other buildings as well and it turned out very nice. It's It uh, kind of gives, in, depending on what light you're looking at, either kind of a reddish or even sometimes a purplish color uh, depending on how you're looking at it. And I, I think it turned out really well.
So this is the finished stage. Um, once you're done with all that stuff, all you have to do is just kind of, as I'm pointing out here, pick out a couple of different areas to do different colors like coppers, reds, you know, uh, blues or whatnot on the different wires and cables and things like that. So if you have enjoyed what you've seen, uh, like and subscribe and consider joining me on Patreon. Thank you very much.